Today, the Tour de France leaves Ortez in the south and heads for the wine region of Bordeaux. The surviving riders looking forward now to flatter roads all the way to Paris and the finish on the Champs-Élysées. Hello and welcome back to the Tour de France. Well, today the riders are coming onto flatter roads here towards Bordeaux, and yesterday they waved farewell to the Pyrenees, and I think everybody was pleased about that. Even Miguel Indurain had his bad moments. This is the overall situation. Miguel Indurain still the clear leader and should win the race now, but there's still a good battle going on for second place. Alvaro Mecchia is far from safe there. Phil Anderson climbed a little bit while he was in the Pyrenees, but lost time even so. Now more than two hours behind the race lead. Well, today in Bordeaux, the Tour de France wasn't the only cycling action because in the velodrome, just 500 metres to the left of the finishing line, Chris Boardman, the Olympic champion, was attempting the most coveted record in the world of cycling, the hour record. Inside, one minute to go for Boardman. The clock is counting it down. The record is aimed for has gone. 51.596. 904 centimetres, that was the record of Graham O'Brien. And in six days have passed by. Chris Borman has come here knowing he's had to beat a friend and a rival to take the most coveted record in the sport. And ironically enough, he's been cheered by French people who have been given free entry and by the British who have come to watch him. They're on their feet now in the home straight. The shouting out of Chris Borman, the last few centimetres out of those legs, which must be snapping off with the effort. Chris Borman would now become the first rider to break the 52 kilometres barrier. There will be a count back because he must complete the hour, and if the hour isn't exactly on the start finishing line, there will be a count back. So there will be a delay to confirm his exact distance. But it's a record and there's no doubt about that. The gun is gone. Chris Borman is now the holder of the most coveted cycling record in the world. Uh, that was an unbelievable ride today. Did you think this morning that you were going to take it by so much? Uh, well, actually, we were hoping to take it by uh, a lot more. But um, because of the humidity, it's nearly 80% because of the rain outside. Uh, it was just too hot. So I had to slow down or uh, this chanto was going to faint. So uh, I thought it was better to get it by a little bit or a little bit less and, uh, and, and not fall off at half an hour. Uh, and also, because it's so dark outside, we had to have all the lights on, which makes the temperature go up. So it was the worst conditions we could have got. But uh, I said I had to do it today, so I had to do it today. Absolutely unbelievable. Chris Borman there setting the record now in excess of 52 kilometres in the hour. But that's in the velodrome. We can now go back to the action on the road in the Tour de France. And the rollout this morning with the riders leaving Ortez, heading for Bordeaux, coming at just after 9.15 and all of the riders starting who finished yesterday, so nobody's dropped out. And a little bit more relaxed atmosphere as well as they make the way, and I would think that Miguel Indurain here is also feeling very, very happy this morning. No mountains ahead of him at all. The route they face offers no challenge at all. One small hill, and then they come right down to the finish, just five meters above sea level at Bordeaux, 200.5 kilometers. And at the first sprint, it was Christophe Capel winning after 14 kilometers ahead of Peter de Klerk, Johan Museu trying to sneak a few points for the green jersey competition. But it's generally, there's been no real attacking at all. So the riders now passing under the 20 kilometer to go banner, and that will leave them just 12 miles of racing. And it's been a very quiet day here in the Tour de France. They have all come together. We've had one or two little flurries, but nothing to speak of. And now it looks like this leading group, which went away at around about the 143 kilometer point, 21 riders in it, are now looking forward to a possible sprinted out between them when they get down to Bordeaux. Flat roads, we're running down to sea level all of the time now. We'll finish at just five meters above sea level. And uh, well, if we're looking at the majority of uh, teams represented in this breakaway, it should be good enough for them to stay clear. But the gap, Paul, is still 
still hovering. It's one minute and 27 seconds as they went under the 20 kilometer to go banner. So they haven't actually managed to pull back on these leaders at the moment. And I really must admit that if it does come down to a finish between all of these riders at the moment, I really wouldn't know which man to pick. Well, this is the big figure. Now it could well be Christoph Henn is going away here. Or is it Ralph Aldug? Ralph Aldug it is. Now here's a sprinter, Paul, who might like to take on Abdul Japarov, and yet he's starting to... I think this is the first of the loosening up tactics by the German telecom team, because they have so many men in this front group, and they're going to start playing a man-on-man -man now and making the rest chase them down. Everybody knows that that is the tactic because of the speed of the Tashkent Terrier, as he's liked, as he's known around here. They know that they have to try and get clear, because if it does come down to the sprint of the 21 men, I feel that he's almost unbeatable. So. What will happen now is little groups will go away and everybody will keep coming up to them and eventually one group might just go clear but what a way to mark the breakaways. Jamaluddin Abdujaparov himself has come straight up to Rolf Aldag and that looks like Francois Simon in the blue and white jersey of the Kasarama team. Look at those big legs of Abdujaparov. He's letting nobody, he feels now this is his territory. These are the flat roads of the Tour de France and he's the man who's now in control, Abdujaparov. He rode his first Tour de France in 1990 He'll never be a winner of this great race because he hasn't got the power in the mountains all the time trial and he finished 145th but in 1991 he really did come good he finished with two stage wins at Lyon and Reims and he also won the green jersey which he is wearing today with a very good lead overall and he's now going to do something that nobody thought he would do but he split the field up and he's gone and Motte's realized it too Charlie Motte this marvelous little Frenchman who was so badly injured in March He's finding his old form again. He looks over his shoulder there. He's got Jackie Giron, the champion of France, and he's saying, come on, Jackie, let's get up there. And Giron, look at this, Paul. He doesn't even wait for Motti. He's jumped him. Well, he didn't want to work with him to get up there because he has a teammate, Francois Simon, in the front group of three riders there. And you see he's left Charlie Motti gasping for win there. That was a superb little move. He waited until Motti had just slowed down enough, and then he jumped him across. And then Giron has got up to the front group of three riders and it's going to give Charlie Motte a hard little chase just to get on the back there. Motte still searching for the suplex after that injury. Normally he wouldn't have been left like that. He'd have taken the wheel of Giron. But now he's digging deep to just get onto the tail of this group of four. Abdul Japarov, Motte's now about to get onto it. Then he'll take a few deep breaths. Well, I don't think Charlie Motte will be very happy about that. In fact, he may well sit on the back of this group just for a short while to pay back Jackie Durand for the little favour he gave him there. Well, the rival teams, they may, mo may both be French. The French are having a very poor tour indeed. They've won only one stage, which Pascal Lino won at Perpignan almost a week ago, last Sunday in fact. Well, we're already in the streets of Bordeaux. The riders will go through these boulevards till they drop down to the river, then they turn left, keep the river on their right-hand side and then up to put the, the LAC area around here in Bordeaux where the race has habitually finished over the last few years. And a very good finish it is too. We've seen some great winners down on the lake, and not least in Jani Bunyo, who won the stage here. And he's another rider not enjoying his great tour either. Mate, actually, Paul, is just about hanging on at the moment at the back. I'm not surprised after the chase that he had to do there, and the fact that there are two Castorama riders in this group at the moment, I feel that Motti will sit back a little bit now and leave it up to them because they are in the position of strength, having two men there. Jamaluddin Abdujaparov is the fastest sprinter in the group, but Rolf Alnag is a very good finisher himself. So Motte will probably take a back seat for a while, try and recuperate a little bit so that he can try and outfox them when we get nearer to the finish. But there's still a long way to go. And Abdu just checking out what's going on, and there's Jackie Durand taking a good look at uh, Motte. And there's somebody else comes shooting through the inside here, and it looks like it's Michel Vermont has come on. The big rider from Belgium it is, who's latched onto the back. He was the rider who got the last place on the Festina team at the start of the tour at the expense of Sean Kelly, the Irishman. And it's the first breakaway, in fact, which Vermont has been in. Well, it's quite a strange selection program, too, as well as Vermont jumps down the left-hand side of the road. He wants to pay back his team for selecting him for the Tour de France. He's a good rider, but I think it was very strange that selection program around Sean Kelly there because 
I was told that Kelly was informed on the Friday night there's a possibility that you may ride the Tour de France. We will let you know after the outcome of the Belgian Championships. And I watched the interview on Belgian TV the morning of the race when they asked Michel Vermont how happy he was to have been picked for the Tour de France. So the decision was obviously made, and it is such a shame to have kept Sean Kelly out of the Tour de France because I feel he probably won't be able to ride the Tour de France again. Now it seems that behind our camera here there's been a general regrouping of this 21 riders. A number of new names have shot through the lens. A one that was Hermon Frison and this rider coming up here, Stefano Zanata from the Gatorade team. So the Italians are coming back onto the scene again. You can't keep them down. They're having some tremendous years now, the last three or four years. So it does seem these 21 riders are now going to survive to the finish. It's just really a question of which one of them will win the stage. In the Tour de France, most team sponsors are companies with a product to sell. One team that's different is the Onsay team. They're different because Onsay is a Spanish blind society and the Onsay team have one very special member. Each night at the Onsay Hotel, the riders get massage for their aching muscles. But for injuries, the team physiotherapist Miguel Angel Martinez is always on hand. Miguel Angel is blind and according to the riders, the angel does work miracles. When some people they have a problem, he helps it, he helps them, he has a special feeling. He has more feeling than normal people and that's his job. Miguel is proud to be a member of the Onsay team, working with some of the best riders in the world. No, porque me estoy a gusto es la organización de ciego, yo soy ciego y entonces es mi organización. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's uh, very identified with the organization, this, with the organization, not only with the team, but he's a member of the National Spanish Plan organization, and he, he thinks that he's a part of it, and that's why he's so proud he's in the team. Moving hotels every day and a new environment makes life even more difficult for Miguel. But there is a special bond between him and the other team members. Uh, he always has someone to trust on in the team, like the, the masseur he's always with, the sport director, and so he, he trusts a lot on other people to, to get used to the new environment. For Miguel Angel Martinez, working with the riders of the Onsay team is a long yeah. way from his previous job. Uh, before he, he was in the team, he was selling uh, lottery tickets, like the, all the blind guys from the organization do. But now he's in the team. He's yeah, almost a whole year away from house, and when he's in house, when he's home, uh, he's resting and he's studying a little bit. Arriba. Ven aquí. Miguel really is a very special guy. I know because he worked on my knee and worked a miracle as well. Let's go back to the action. Here's Phil Liggett. Now we're racing across the face of Bordeaux itself. Well, that whole group came back together again. At one time, there were 21 riders back in one pack again, but almost immediately Michel Vermont attacked, and he's drawing clear with him now, Yatislav Ekimov and uh, David Kasani from the Ariostia team. On the start line this morning, 136 riders facing the starter, so 44 riders having given up the Tour de France so far, and the average speed of the stage, it'll be a little bit quicker now, it's 34.7 kilometers an hour over the first three hours of the day, and the Tour dipping inside a record speed now at 38.791 kilometers an hour. Yellow jersey today is worn by Miguel Indurain, of course. Tony Rominger is the King of the Mountains leader. And Shumaluddin Abdu Japarov in the thick of the action today is the leader of the green jersey. You see now as we get a little bit closer to the finish, everybody doesn't want to do too much because they're thinking of the energy that they have to save to, produ to produce a final spin at the finish line. It looks as if, to me, it's going to come back together again because they're sitting up across the road. Everyone's looking around to see where the others are, and this is playing into the hands of Abdu Jabarov. 21 riders in the front at the moment. And the mock goes again. Can you believe this? This rider really has got the bit between his teeth today. I think this is his third attack as he launches it again now as we cross Bordeaux. This big rider from Belgium. Well, the winner will definitely come out of this group. Michel Vermont is trying to be that winner at the moment at the 10-kilometer flag. 
the time gap to Patrice Esno was 2 minutes and 43 seconds, with the main field a lot further back now at 3 minutes. This is the main field, and as we can see as over the last few days, many times we've seen it's the Banesto team doing the work, but not chasing too much, because all they're interested in is keeping Miguel Indurain in the yellow jersey, and there's nobody in this group of 21 who's a threat. Well, I think this is his third attack ball, and it's going to be the last one, as far as he's concerned. If he's caught now, he'll have used up far too much energy for the finish, so he's totally committed. And for the moment, at least, he's got the gap. Little look at his gears there. 21 different gear ratios, but he'll be using the highest one of them now. He won't need any others today. And there's another sharp attack, and I'm not sure whether, in fact, that's not Charlie Motte, who's tight. Is the way he looks over his shoulder. That's little Charlie down there. And Shimolodin Abdu Japarov is straight after him. But this rider is holding them all off, and the finish is coming closer. 3.5 kilometers to go now to the line. Oh, and dear me, they're right on him. This little group, Charlie Motte, has sat up, though. He wants some help from Abdu Japarov. And Abdu Japarov doesn't seem too willing to give it. But it looks as though Vermont has decided to wait for these two and take a breather behind them, perhaps. In fact, that green jersey there was Zanata who came across, and I think that may well be Yatislav Ekimov who's come up there. And they've caught Michel Vermont, who really was suffering towards the end there. There are three riders in the lead at the moment. Zanata swings over, waiting for Yatislav Ekimov to do the turn, but behind the group is really breathing down their necks. Here's Prudentia Indurain. Looks rather like his brother, except the... Attire isn't quite the same because his brother Miguel wears the yellow jersey. You can see him now. So these are the teammates who have survived the tour with Miguel Injure now bringing home their leader. They will not be concerned by the time gap because none of the riders in that leading group uh, had any chance of gaining enough time today to endanger Miguel Injure. Now Simon looking across there and seeing if Barry is going to continue because they want to try and hold off. As you hit this psychological point where they might relax behind just long enough for them to gain a couple of yards that will decide the stage today. And Francois Simon is trying to desperately keep this move going. Bauer gets his wheel very, very quickly, then takes the opportunity to check over where the pack is, and they're massing right behind now as the finish approaches. Can't be too long now to the one-kilometer banner. That is what they will be looking for, and it looks as if they're getting a little bit of a gap there. Four or five seconds as they come through with one kilometre to go. A Bauer comes through again. It's going to be an incredible sprint. And can the group behind come back? I'm not sure now. Well, Jamaldin Abdu Japarov may have made a mess of this for his sprint because Steve Bauer could be giving Motorola a stage win here. They've had one. Oh, and dear me, I don't know what shot up there, but he hit the spokes of Bauer, but he didn't mind. He's looking over to Seymour, who refuses now to assist because he wants to start the sprint. They're going to gamble. They're going to gamble on them, not catching them, and play cat and mouse. This is a dangerous way to survive in the tour. Bauer is trying to wait and not use his energy too soon as the spin starts on the left of the road. Francois Simon won't go either. This is nervous. These are nervous moments indeed. And you know what have they done? They've thrown it away. They've completely thrown it away as home comes now. And they've given this to Abdu Japarov, who's poised in third place there. Abdu Japarov is the rider in third place. Unfortunately, as you can see, the public... Ah, oh, that's better. Now we can see the middle. Uh, Franz Masson is coming in the centre. Now goes Abdu Japarov, and they gave him this one. They won't stop him now. He kicks on the right of the picture. Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov wins with ease. And go on, he's going to go again. Wrong line. He sprinted for the wrong line, but he got it in the end. Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov snatched it on the line. And that is the second stage win for the little man from Tashkent. And now you see why they were right to fear him. He just accelerates away, no problem at all, except he sits up when he gets to the advert advertisement signs on the road and thinks it's the finish luck. And there's the salute, wrong line. It was the line that he's just gone over, so he continued the sprint, but he's had so much to spare, it wasn't very difficult, was it? And now they're bringing home Miguel to the line. Nobody interested. This looks like Patrice Esno, who survived. Four minutes, 20 seconds for Esno, who's in. Now, will the main field sprint it out? I'm not too sure whether they're going to bother because there's not a lot left for them today with 22 riders already home. Injurain will be very happy just to sit there and pedal in. And the Bonestos having a look over the shoulder. Well, they are going to have a little bit of a sprint anyway. And the lotto rider bringing them home here is, in fact, Luke Rusen. 
And uh, again, you see, I'm not too sure whether he made the same mistake of sprinting for the wrong line. It was Peter de Klerk, he was, who just brought them all in. Well, in the end, they gave that to Jamalajin Abdul Japarov, didn't they? You see how fast he is. If he sees the finishing line, he can sprint quicker than anybody else in the world. The result, a win for Abdul Japarov, well clear of the others. It all went down to the photo finish. Frankie Andreo getting the verdict over Rolf Sorensen and Franz Massen, and there wasn't an inch between them on the line. But just after that finish, Alan Piper was with Rolf Sorensen, and he was far from happy with Abdul Japarov. Rolf, you're second today, still chasing that stage win. Well, chasing in the beginning of the tour, but it was very difficult in the beginning, it was so fast for, all, for the sprinters. But now, in the, the last week, I've been feeling really good. I've been coming out of the tour like I wanted to, and... Uh, well, today I had a try and uh, Abdu was just too fast. And he was just too fast for you? There wasn't anything in the sprint? Ah, well, 300 meters to go, I was on the wheel of Masson and uh, he came by and he pushed me away, you know, with his hands and you're not allowed to do that, so I would go and watch the, the, the film from the finish and see if it's enough to put in a, if, it's, if, I, if I'm second, I'll do uh, 